unless you've been living under a rock for the past few weeks, you'll know that we're bang slap in the middle of Season of the Voop. Linear fusion rifles are all the rage, more so in thanks to particle deconstruction from the seasonal artifact, but also in part to the recent buff they got to their overall damage output. We've all seen the boss melting potential of the super rare 1000 voices, but not everybody has one and it can limit your loadout potential, especially if you're keen on gilding that conqueror title and tackling the master vault of glass raid. Fortunately, the legendary linear fusion rifles can and do pack an equivalent punch in the right hands with the right setup. There's one or two in particular which are hot on the lips of most players, but did we forget about one that's equally as powerful, if not more so, in certain situations? We're going to dive deep into this underrated weapon, so stick around to find out why, as I put it through its paces and also show you a build to max out its potential. 87% of viewers of the channel aren't currently subscribed though, so if you're a new or returning viewer and haven't yet done so, please do the thing. We're nearing 10,000 subs right here, so there's no better time than now to join up so you don't miss a beat. Destiny 2 is all about having the right tool in the box, and Tarantula is definitely one that goes under the radar and is forgotten about more often than not. It's the only legendary arc linear fusion rifle in the game right now and it does have a few top tier perk combinations that I think you need to get hold of for any end game aspirations. It may not be as prestigious as the new Reed's Regret or widespread as the Season of the Chosen's Threaded Needle, but this year one vanilla relic was actually reissued at the same time. You can actually focus the tarantula via the prismatic recaster at helm from the long shot prismatic lens focused umbral engram. You need to do 50 heroic public events to unlock it though, so yeah, fill your boots with that one. If you never did them though, or don't fancy doing it now, it can drop from any legendary engram, so go turn in your materials at the gunsmith in the tower. I have like 4 or 5 sitting in my vault waiting for a rainy day, so they must be a half decent drop rate to be honest. Stats wise, it's on par with all the other linear fusion rifles in the game, with a base magazine size of 6 plus perfect vertical recoil as standard. Fluted barrel is an excellent barrel option to boost stability and handling, with Hammerforge rifling perfect for boosting its range and therefore pushing out its damage drop off. Enhanced or ionised battery will bump up the magazine further, or you can go with liquid coils to boost the damage ever so slightly. This is ideal, as you'll be aiming for higher burst damage output more so than overall DPS with this weapon. Now in the first perk column, I'd be looking for one of two perks. Field prep is going to increase your reserve ammo, but it's also going to improve your reload, store and ready speed when crouched. This drastically improves the handling of the weapon, but in my honest opinion, I think it's outdone by firmly planted. You gain increased accuracy, stability and handling when crouched. It's going to make landing the all important precision shots a piece of cake, which are absolutely necessary with linear fusions. In the final perk column, there's plenty of choice for the run and gun playstyles, with kill clip, rampage and dragonfly being options. But if you're running and gunning, you shouldn't really be using a linear fusion rifle to be honest, and so then, there's only really one pick. Box Breathing This once top tier must have god roll perk was immense back in the Warmind DLC days, but it is absolutely still a must have pick, especially on Tarantula. Aiming this weapon for a short period without firing grants bonus range and precision damage that resets after firing or exiting zoom. It's the only perk on the weapon that will give you a flat 30% damage increase for literally doing nothing, and it also helps extend the effective range of the weapon, which if you've used any linear fusion rifle recently, you'll understand how low the damage falloff actually is. A normal linear fusion rifle shot hits for 47,000 on bosses, but with box breathing active, you'll hit for over 61,000. With only a 1 second wait to activate it, you can hit for over 366,000 damage in a 6 round magazine. Plus, box breathing works on all enemy types, not just bosses. In comparison, a Reed Regret with Vorpal hits for 58,000 per shot, which with over 6 rounds is about 340,000. A god roll with triple tap will push this higher towards the 400k mark and obviously has less downtime, 
but as I mentioned, this shows why Tarantula is more set for higher burst short DPS than sustained damage output like a triple tap read regret. I've got a near perfect roll on my Tarantula and I've been loving using it a lot this season too. There's actually tons you can do with it, to boost its damage output even further, making it a top contender for replacing your loadout this season, putting it on par with the heavy hitting favourites. So let's now put it into practice with a simple yet effective build anybody can use to push it to its limits. But first, why not hit the subscribe button if you're new here? I cover tons of builds and guides aimed at making the end game of Destiny 2 accessible for everyone so that you too can get that loot. Liking this video really does help me out and it's always appreciated. You can also join our community discord server as well, the links are down in the description. So with this build, we're going to really lean into the high burst short DPS style this linear fusion rifle offers, as well as boosting all weapon damage output, plus fast supers and abilities, and there's no better build to go with to do this than a Revenant Stasis Hunter. It's a strange one you might be thinking, but it offers one of the best neutral game arc weapon damage boosts thanks to the exotic Mask of Bacris. Light Shift not only cloaks you and provides a longer range shift ability, but you also gain a boost to arc weapon damage and damage against slowed or frozen targets for a short time too. This is a 20% damage boost all in and it does stack with box breathing. It also stacks with particle deconstruction which maxes out at a 40% damage boost to enemies damaged by a linear fusion rifle and fusion rifle. You can also use an arc fusion rifle like the plug one or main ingredient to help instant proc the max stack in no time. Obviously, we won't solely be using Tarantula throughout, so it's all about the setup with this build, so we've got a really strong neutral game here too. Melee Wellmaker will produce elemental wells on melee final blows, which will be stasis wells, so chuck on the front of might to boost stasis weapon damage output as well, with Vulpecula being our main primary workhorse here with a nice 25% damage bonus to it as well. Bountiful wells will produce two wells on melee final blows and use the new seeking wells mod so that the wells can track to your location instead of you having to chase them down. Well of Restoration is another new mod this season, and will grant additional energy to your lowest ability when collecting a stasis well. This will help to recharge all of your abilities faster, especially your backrest dodge. Thermoclastic Blooming is back on the menu and will create orbs of power on stasis final blows which not only grant super energy, but also grant melee energy when collected if you have the invigoration mod equipped too. Hands on will also boost your super recharge on melee final blows as well. Grim Harvest will create stasis shards when defeating slowed or frozen targets and provide melee energy when collected. Winter Shroud will help to slow nearby enemies when using the backwards shift and is an excellent aspect to use here. The Whisper of Conduction will let the stasis shards track to you also and will provide an overshield thanks to the Whisper of Rhyme when collected. Lastly, the Whisper of Impetus will reload your weapons on melee hits and boost their ready speed for a short time. This build is all about the setup so that you can freeze bosses, mini bosses or champions on tap allowing for you to do maximum damage output with the Tarantula when required. You'll be able to use any or all of your abilities to freeze targets and even your Silence and Squall Super which now stays on targets for longer, more effectively and then go to town with your boosted linear fusion rifle for max damage output. Granted, you only get a short time window to pull this off, within the 10 seconds light shift is active, but you can easily use half a mag of box breathing shots in that time frame. This whole setup has the potential to hit 100,000 per shot with the tarantula, showing off its true potential. You could simplify this with a pure arc subclass build using the font of my only for an extra 5% damage, but I feel the neutral game of this revenant build, especially using a stasis primary like Vulpecula or the peace bond can't be overlooked. This is also a slight variation of my Star Eater Scales build and is effectively just another option in the toolbox for you to use and can definitely work in endgame content. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into the world of the Tarantula, so go digging in your vaults to see what you've got gathering cobwebs. Remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel and also share this with your friends. I've been Truds, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time.